Hi everybody, welcome to session three in the practice of physical geography. We're still in our section of the module where we're talking about big ideas in physical geography. And the big idea that we're going to talk about this time is the idea of thresholds. We might talk about geomorphic thresholds where, I, where we're identifying boundaries in a process continuum continuum within landscape processes, but we can also identify thresholds in all sorts of other areas of physical geography, most particularly, for example, in the climate system. So this week's big idea is the idea of thresholds. Now you are, I'm sure, already familiar with the idea, even in a, an everyday common sense kind of a way. There are lots of situations where we can identify a boundary in a process system. For example, I'm just putting my, my biro on top of my notepad here and I'm going to tip it towards you. And I'm tipping it towards you a little bit and nothing is happening. I'm tipping it towards you a little bit more. Nothing is happening a little bit more. So I've tipped it towards you. I'm tilting this bit of paper towards you and nothing is happening. So where's the gradient limit? Where's the boundary at which point something actually happens? It's actually getting quite, oh, there it goes. So at certain gradients, nothing happens. As I increase the gradient, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. Oh, there's a point where something happens. What determines that point where something happens? What determines the gradient at which the pen falls off? Well, it's to do with the driving stresses, the resisting stresses, friction at the base, the, the, grip, the boundary I'm tipping it to obviously is, is, is the driving fact, one of the driving factors, but then the, the characteristics of that material, of that material, and all sorts of other factors. That's what thresholds is all about in a common sense kind of a way. In this session, we're gonna talk about that in a, in a more a specifically geographical uh, context. Now, a lot of you will already have encountered it in a more specifically geographical context because this diagram will be familiar to a lot of you from work that you did in the first semester. And this is a diagram of how things change over the course of time. So maybe we're talking about river channel width, for example. I think that was the, the example I used in uh, the fundamentals of physical geography with some of you. So over the course of time, the width of a river channel isn't really varying very much. It's varying day to day. Obviously, if things happen, floods come through and go away again. But there's no long term change uh, in, in the nature of that, uh, that river channel. Then some threshold is crossed. We've reached some critical point at which change is going to happen. And in the first semester, I was then focusing on what happened next in terms of this delay before anything actually moves, then the different things that can happen after the event has occurred in terms of changes to this equilibrium. So you've encountered thresholds, but we were talking mainly about equilibrium at that time. Now we're going to come back and we're going to talk about thresholds specifically. So this is one of those opportunities that you have to tie together different bits of material from different parts of your program and try to make sense of, of how everything hangs together. So welcome to part three of this module and welcome to Big Ideas in Physical Geography, Thresholds.